We are here in LA. I'm out here recording 18 podcast episodes. I'm writing a tour. And one of my favorite reasons for being in LA means that I can try. Cybertruck. I ordered the Cybertruck four years ago and I've been waiting for Elon to release that bloody car. I'm gonna try out the Cybertruck. I'm gonna try out this. Oh my God. This crazy contraption that I've just bought from Apple and I'm gonna let you know what I think. What does it mean for entrepreneurs? Let's give it a go. I'm doing two podcasts a day, every single day until I leave LA. The problem is, I also have a speaking tour. We've sold 25,000 tickets to the speaking tour and I haven't written anything yet. So the problem I have, the problem I'm facing right now, the podcasts take about three to four hours each. So that's eight hours of solid recording, but they also take two hours of research each. The type of work that y your brain has to do to do a podcast while is really like intellectually intensive. So you don't have a lot of mental energy left to like sit down and then write loads because you've been recording for like 10 or 12 hours a day. Then I need to go to the gym, which takes me about two hours in total, that's 14 hours. I need to sleep for maybe eight hours. I need to eat in there somewhere as well. So if I'm really efficient every day, this is why I was time blocking. If I'm really efficient every day, I think I can do this. 12 hours recording, two hours in the gym, eight hours sleep. Doesn't add up, does it? Because there's not going to be enough time. That leaves me two hours in the day, every day, to write the show. Look, <laughs> people have harder lives, they, and I can't complain. <laughs> I chose this fucking chaos. Well, you can, if you, uh, if you move it, this gets this wheel like oh, weird glow. glow. It's like Halo. So I just put it on. Is that because that's there? <laughs> yeah, that's because that's there. <laughs> It'll make all the difference. Okay, so today is that day. We need to focus, Jack. There's a cyber truck available. <laughs> I can book it from the 18th to the 28th. Continue. You can put Steve on a, a different background. Oh, I could actually. Let me just get his head and see yeah. if I can. Oh, green screen. <laughs> Don't green screen me on this. Don't. You're making yourself work. <laughs> I'm like hoping my card declines. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When you know you're doing yeah, something yeah. stupid and you're just like, I hope, I hope someone intervenes. <laughs> I hope American Express intervene right now <laughs> and say like, oh, I'm sorry, we think it's fraud. You know this big quote I was thinking about yesterday when ChatGPT came out of Sora? Yeah. I was like, that, that fucks up a lot of things, you know, yeah, by the way, does. doesn't it? That like really jobs. fucks up a lot of things. ChatGPT. The Sora update. The text the video. video. Uh, You've it's seen mental. it. You how where where have you been? Oh my god, Jack. Jack. <laughs> that is their text to video. Nah. No, it's like it's like 4K movie quality. And the prompt they typed in is there. The best one is this one's the best in terms of quality that I saw. That's is that a, that a fake human? Yeah. He's a fuck. He looks no. Look at the prompt. Someone is that free? It. Yeah, well, it's with a ChatGPT package, <laughs> which is like $20 a month. So, so, this is live now. So, you have to be yeah. part of the testing thing. Letting you
hopefully I get to see you again soon. Thank I you so much. I hope so. Cool. What's happening now? What's up? Ice bath tonight. He- hello. One sec. Hello. What? <laughs> what time tonight? Place. What time tonight? <laughs> I think it's Wednesday morning. Could you do another night? No. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Next, next train. Next train. I, I, I'm trying to think of fun things to do with Steve. <laughs> what did I say yesterday? You said bowling. You want to do that? Steve, that boring? Do. Whatever. Just something fun. The bowling range is a waiting list of 50 minutes. Mm. An alternative option is we get to a shooting range. That sounds fun. Should you do it? Get, do I get a real gun? Yeah. Let's go yeah. shooting! <laughs> <laughs> get down! Get out of here! It's going to blow! Get on the chopper! Can you, can you do that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no problem! And like I said, you guys share all the guns, but don't swap the guns around. So pistol stays here, AK stays here, M16 stays here. And keep the rifles pointed up. If you need assistance, there's two of our staff members inside. Ask them for help. Do you have a card? Sophie, Sophie can give you a card. I think Sophie's asleep. I don't have a, I don't have a card. Uh-oh. Sophie now runs my Amex, so. Okay. Sophie, you can share the debit card with Jen, but make sure she doesn't abuse it. So keep a very close eye on the bank statement because Jen says, I've asked her to order me lunch at Dialogue Cafe. I suspect she might be trying to buy a cyber truck for herself and Jack, so just, just to make sure. It's I've approved Dialogue Cafe Lunch, I've not approved a cyber truck. <laughs> it's booked. <laughs> God, my shoes don't match my trousers. <laughs> You're under arrest. <laughs> One more time. You are under arrest. You're under arrest. You're under arrest. <laughs> That's your warning. <laughs> Welcome to the Cybertruck unveil. What the fuck? This is the coolest car of the <laughs> It's so futuristic. I feel like I'm living in the future. Mental. I press the button to get in. I just tap the door and it opens. So cool. It's so weird. It's so weird, isn't it? Look at that windscreen wiper. So, do you want to go? Or stay? Do you want to drive? Stationary. Oh, I'm just going to show you. Okay. Foot on the brake. Mm-hmm. One foot for one, bit both pedals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Press this icon, and literally all you do to go forward is that. No, or back, or reverse, and then what? parking in the middle. No handbrake. Just yeah. Here. Is it the coolest car you've ever seen? I do kind of like it, but I'm like. Mm. Should I try that? Mm, I don't know. Oh my god, oh, I saw what you mean. <laughs> Whoa, what are you saying? Whoa, bro, look at that! Oh my god! We're just testing it out for what it's like. <laughs> Stabilize. <Stabilized. laughs> <laughs> oh god, that really does go, does it? Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Just watching this go down the street. Going side to side. <laughs> <laughs> How do you turn it on? You just take it off. It locks when you walk away. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So that's that. That's that. Tell them this life, yeah, it's still love it. I'm taking a shot for my enemies. I can't waste no more time on my energy. I know they know I got it on lock. Go against me, that's a long shot. Cause I'm counting wins all around the clock. Never doubt me, boy, I don't stop. <laughs> okay, so this for me is the coolest car 
ever made. And I've driven a lot of cars, but for me, the Cybertruck is the coolest car ever, ever made. And I'll tell you why. In my book, I talk about absurdity and I talk about how brands can use absurdity to communicate. And this is the most absurd looking car I've ever seen in every way. And I'll tell you what, this car is fast. Really, really, really fast. And look how big the trunk is. Absolutely crazy. It's just the most beautiful car I've ever seen. Look at this. It reminds me of the car that should have been in Kanye's flashing lights video. Like this is the car that should have been in that video. This is how you open the car, which is super cool. You, as long as you've got the key on you, you just press that button there and it opens the, the doors for you. Super cool. It's all the small things on a Cybertruck. And there's like a bigger message here about innovation, business, product creation, which is just, it's the small things. Look, this steering wheel is not the, it's not my favorite steering wheel ever, but it would be weird if the steering wheel wasn't different because everything else in this car is so fundamentally different. Like even the windscreen wiper, everything is different. And it's like, once you've driven a Cybertruck, once you've laid your hands on this car, it just feels like it's hard to go back to a normal car. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. When you get in a car like this and you're driving through LA, do you ever have like a what the hell moment? Or do you think yeah, I have those moments all the time. It was only just, just about 10 years ago that I was completely penniless broke. I had nothing. I was, I didn't have an audience at all. I, I didn't have anything. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have information, which is probably the most important thing. I didn't have skills, the skills that I have now. I don't know if 10 years sounds like a long time or a short time, but my life changed in a couple of years, but now we're like 10 years deep and my life is just completely different. Um, in every sense of the word, I feel like life is very surreal and I have that feeling a lot. And um, sometimes the thought that I've not processed enough and sometimes I mess around with in my head is like, did I do something to deserve this? Or is this um, part of a simulation where I, I, in the simulation, I just got a lucky hand, or is it something that I did? Um, and, and the third question is maybe the most important because if it's something that I did, it's something that others can do. And so much of my work, much of the podcast, much of my writing, much of everything that I post is about trying to understand the parts of my life that went well, that are linked to things that I actually intentionally did versus, I don't know, some form of circumstantial luck, being born in the right place at the right time, with the right amount of trauma, with the right parents, the right amount of love, control. And I really hope, you know, not for my ego, but for the sheer fact that it's replicable, I really hope that it's something I did. If it's something that I did, um, then it's something that other people can do. And I would much rather live in a world where success is something that we can control, and therefore failure is something that we can control. I, I prefer that version of the world. The world is, of course, much more nuanced than that. Bad things happen, good things happen, luck happens, but there is a controllable element to, to your life and I think that's the part that I'm obsessed with. What part of this game that we're all playing can we can control? What are the levers we can pull? Now, I've, I always wonder what, what they see. Gosh, it is a lot, it is quite, it's quite interesting. Move out of the way a minute, just so I can see if you see the glimmer on the books. No, you forget, you forget they're fake. Gosh, it's, yeah, I get nervous. I know that sounds crazy, but I literally just sat there and said to myself, imagine you got invited on the Dara Vasia and you had to do what my guests have to do. I would be nervous. Can we think about doing an episode where you interview yourself? No, I'm not interested in doing that. <laughs> Terrifying. You would know all the questions. That yeah, ask yeah. To I'd be crying my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Should you buy a vision for from the US? Okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm gonna go buy one. If they if they'll sell me one just by walking up, I'll buy it. Right, let's go in the car. Yeah, I'll buy that. Okay, so. Apple Vision Pro, a lot of people have a lot to say about this thing, but is this thing gonna help us or is it gonna hurt us? Hmm. Headset, 
It's got the battery pack, which goes in your pocket. Normal US charger. Okay, so this is the Vision Pro. It's got a little thing in front of it, so take that off. It is pretty heavy. Nothing. <laughs> what the fuck did you turn it on? It needs power. Hmm. Next, you'll set up Apple Vision Pro for your eyes and hands. Join. <laughs> That's actually so easy to type. What? You should have no idea what that is like. Out here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Oh, okay, you can move it. Oh, look. So there's this massive screen, right? That's five times bigger than Jack's chair. And I'm, I've got it in my hand. <laughs> and, it's, and it's there. Now I'm just moving it around the room. People environments. Let's try a different environment. Oh my god, that's fucking crazy. Oh my god, that's mad. <laughs> I like, there was like a little bit of you somewhere, then I used this thing here and I was full of somebody everywhere I looked. <laughs> I'm sat by a massive lake and in the lake there's like lots of raindrops hitting the lake and trees and big lake in front of me, loads of trees. And if I look around, there's just like, I can see the field and the trees behind me. The, do you know what the crazy thing is? You can come here and you can watch a footballer movie. Oh, oh my God. Can you hear that? Yes. The screen in front of me goes from Vish to Jack. <laughs> okay, environment. You will walk away from this conversation understanding not only what it takes to reach the very peak of your powers, but to stay <laughs> Okay, and then I can go by the lake. Let me go by the lake. Oh my fucking god. I'm sat by the lake watching me. Oh my god, it's night time. Oh my god. Oh my god. This, the screen that there's, there's what I can only describe as a 200 foot screen above the lake. Wow. Steve Pollard. That's mad. Yeah, we were on the homepage. That was wild. Yeah, we're, we're in the... That's so cool. <laughs> I click podcast. It says popular shows, Diary of a CEO. <laughs> oh my God. I've just clicked on the photos. Oh, it comes... Oh my God, all my photos are in here. Shit. <laughs> Shit, get out! Um, you're up. Are you back in Yosemite? Oh, it's El Capitan. That's El Capitan. I've been there. That is mad. I'm at the top of a mountain, a volcano, and I have YouTube here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what life's going to be like. It's quite nice. You get that, YouTube up there, sunrise over there. Lovely. It's funny because when I was in there, all I was thinking was like, I want you guys to see what I can see. Mm. And I think that's so... That's what ex experience is all about. Experience is all about sharing it with someone else. So I was saying to the guys earlier, you know Laurie, who came up on the podcast? Yeah. The therapist, she was talking about how her son's struggling to, I can't be able to talk to you like this. <laughs> her, strong, her son's struggling to connect with people because they just send pictures on Snapchat. Yeah. And emojis. Yeah. And when they go in the real world, they don't quite know what they're doing. Yeah. Bring this into the mix. It's crazy, yeah. Like, Imagine seeing a normal human. Like. Yeah, that's you, you put this on, you get the feeling that you're actually in the real world. I just think it's like, too far. Slippery slope. Yeah. Like many people, I've been incredibly excited to get my hands on this piece of technology because it feels like the start of a new S-curve. All technology at some point follows a very sort of typical pathway from its inception to its sort of growth phase to its maturity phase. And I've been waiting, I think for the last four or five years, to get my hands on what I believe 
is the next piece of hardware that will send us up a new S-curve. But here's the thing, I have a friend who I shan't name, and my friend is someone who is very concerned about the state of the world right now as it relates to loneliness. They actually run retreats that endeavor to bring people together to end loneliness. And I was sat on my sofa at home with this particular friend when the Vision Pro was announced, and they were absolutely devastated because they were concerned what this would mean for human connection. You'll probably remember that video of the father playing with his kids with his headset on. It, it, it had shades of a dystopian future because this is the start of a new S-curve. But anyway. You know, when I watched reviews of this device, the thing that I heard over and over, people are gonna talk about my emails. I see this, they're gonna forget the review and they're gonna say, Steve Bartlett's got 20,000 unread emails. I don't use mail, so that, that's why that's it. That's just, that's just kind of, can we get rid of that? Just so people don't talk about it. Fuck. Shit. Fucking Apple Vision Pro will shut down in 26 seconds. It's gonna shut down in 14 seconds, we need a charger. Five. When you first put this thing on, it's a bit of a paradigm shift. And the paradigm shift is the awareness of how useful the space around you could become. This is my computer on a 100 inch screen in front of me. And as you can see, Will, who's recording, has completely disappeared. Oh, look at that. Explore the best selling audio. Look at that. You think I planned that? I didn't plan that. Diary of a CEO, look at that, number one. <laughs> this is one of the most insane experiences I think I've ever had. And this is a, really a glimpse into the future. I've got my laptop screen here where I can do my work, I've got my to-do list and all my apps across the bottom. Over here I have my emails live. I could pull up my to-do list over here and I can watch Manchester United play over here. It's hard to imagine a world where I wouldn't work like this. And I, you know, when I saw reviews of this online, I always wondered if it would look as good as this in reality. And I have to say, it absolutely does. It's super high definition, it's crisp, and it feels like these windows are in the room. Ugh, wow. I have to say, this is, it's remarkable. I don't think this is the device that's going to change the world, but I do think that this category is going to change the world. And I've got mixed feelings about that. On one hand, it's amazing, because we're gonna be able to see things that ordinarily we would never have been able to see. The cost of entry to the world, to sporting events, to travel, comes right down. Productivity can go right up. Education can be absolutely transformed. And it's clear to me how a device like this could already make me more productive. Instead of getting caught up in all of the productivity gains and the excitement of the technology, we also, for once, if we've learned anything over the last 20 years, should ask ourselves about guardrails, about parameters, and about the human impact on more immersive, more isolating technology. I am gonna use it. I know that much. I can imagine myself using it to watch the football while I work, but right now, the use cases don't extend much further than that for me. When this device matures, when this product category matures and it gets lighter and lighter and the hardware falls away and the battery life gets longer, it's very easy to see how this device will occupy more of my time and then more of my time, and then more of my time. And there's something about that that's a little bit scary. <laughs>